What if you could make a walking robot move smoothly without programming every single servo by hand? That's the magic of inverse kinematics. Hi, I'm Jacob. Welcome back to my channel. Recently I built my own hexapod robot and while putting everything together was fun, getting it to walk was really a nightmare. Sure, you could animate each of the servos one by one, but trust me, it's really slow, painful and almost impossible to get right. After hours of digging through YouTube videos and articles, I realized inverse kinematics was the best answer. But most tutorials I found were either too complicated, too vague or only explained a single leg. So in this video, I'm making the guide I really wish existed when I started on my own. I'll show you how to implement inverse kinematics using simple math and easy to follow code, no advanced math degree required. We'll use my hexapod here as an example, but the same principles apply to any legged robot or even robotic arms. And once you understand the basics, you will be able to create really smooth, complex movements with just a few lines of code. So let's get started. Robot kinematics is all about how to get robots to move using joints and links. Joints are the parts of the robot that can rotate using servos. For a hexapod, we have a hip, a knee and a foot joint in each of the legs. Links are the rigid parts between the joints. In this hexapod, there's a thigh link and a foot link. For simple robots, you can use the simple approach of forward kinematics. Here you tell each servo where to move and the tip of the foot will end up as a combination of the joint angles and the length of the links. You can find the angles by calculation or even simple trial and error to put the foot tip at a given position. While it's pretty easy to implement in code, it takes a lot of time to animate a hexapod with many servos. And when you want to add more complex movement, like dynamically changing the height of the robot, you will discover that forward kinematics cannot do the job well enough. So let's switch gears to inverse kinematics. Here we tell the robot where we want the foot of each leg to be placed, and then we use math to calculate the joint angles needed for the foot tip to reach that position. With inverse kinematics, it's actually initially harder to implement, but once it works, it becomes very easy to create more complex movement like this attack animation. When doing inverse kinematics, some math is required. My aim, however, was to keep the math as simple and easy to implement as possible, and use only operations that you can find in any Arduino. To do math, we need to agree on the coordinate system to use. There is actually different types of coordinate systems with the axis pointing in different directions. A commonly used coordinate system for robots is called a right-handed coordinate system, where the x-axis is pointing forward on the robot, the z-axis is up and the y is to the left when seen from the back. This coordinate system will be used for all our calculations. When implementing math in an Arduino, all angles are in radians where full rotation is 2 times pi, meaning around 6 radians. I find it a lot simpler to visualize angles in degrees, so I have chosen to work with degrees as the main unit in the code. It's very easy to convert between radians and degrees using these simple formulas. But if you prefer, you can stick with radians instead of converting between the two. To make inverse kinematics, the only math you need is just three types of calculations. The first calculation is how to find the angle of a single line, let's call it A. If you know the values of x and y, the formula to calculate the angle is a simple arctan function. The second type of calculations you need is how to calculate the angles of a right triangle. A right triangle is a triangle that contains one 90 degree angle, also known as the right angle. If you know the lengths A and B, you can calculate the length of the last segment L using this simple formula, and the angles B and C using these formulas. The third thing you need is to be able to calculate the angles of any triangle where you already know the lengths A, B and C. It does not matter how the triangle is oriented or what shape it has, just use these formulas. And this is really all the math that's required, not too hard. Because there are so many legs, it's a good idea to come up with some names so you can refer to them. I have chosen some names as shown in the orange boxes, and this leg for example is the right middle leg. 
When providing the position of the feet, I have chosen to do it relatively to the center of the robot. And I have chosen to define the height of the center in the same height as the knee joint since it simplifies the code a bit. If, for example, I want the right middle leg as the hexapod is standing now, the coordinate for the foot will be like shown here. These are the three angles we need to calculate for the foot, the knee and the hip. The angle should be the correct amount of degree to rotate the servo. When servos are in the position shown in the drawing, they are all set to middle position with 0 degrees and they can be made to rotate 90 degrees in either direction. To calculate the angles for each joint, we need to know the length of the links. For my hexapod, the thigh link is 84 mm and the foot link is 127 mm, but you can just replace it with your own values if they are different. To start with, we want to calculate the angle of the foot servo. We have already measured the constant for physical size of the leg as the foot length and the thigh length. Based on our desired position of the foot, we now know the y and the z value. I know I told you that foot positions are calculated from the center of the robot, but for now let's just assume the center of the coordinate system is at the center of the knee servo. The first thing we do is to calculate the length of L using the simple triangle math I described earlier. So now we have a triangle where we know all three lengths and we can use the formulas to calculate any of the angles. So let's calculate the angle of the foot servo. The next thing we want to calculate is the knee servo angle and this requires a few steps. Since we have all three lengths of the red triangle FL, TL and L, we can calculate the angle VB using this formula. The other angle we need to calculate is the angle between the line L and the y-axis. That angle is the same as the angle on the right red triangle, so we can use this simple formula to calculate VY and then VA will be the same. Now that we know both VA and the VB angles, the knee servo angle can be obtained by simply subtracting VA from VB. As you can see, we have an issue that the foot is not directly below the servo. There's a small gap, which means our calculated angles are slightly wrong. For my hexapod, the error is 14 degrees measured manually, and I call this the gap angle or GA. To calculate the correct angle to apply to the servo to make the foot to be placed completely correct, we need to subtract this gap from our earlier calculations. Now we have a set of calculations that correctly can identify the foot servo angle and the knee servo angle of a single leg in 2D based on the desired foot position given by coordinates Y and Z. Now let's switch to the top view of the robot and calculate the hip servo rotation. The only way the foot can reach point P is if the entire leg is pointing along the H line. We simply need to calculate the angle between X and a line from the center of the hip servos to point P using simple triangle math, and this is the angle A. But to calculate how much the servo itself needs to rotate, we must also consider that the left middle leg, as we're looking at now, is already rotated 90 degrees relatively to the X axis. So the correct angle to apply to the servo becomes A minus 90 degrees. But now we have a problem. When we calculated the rotation for the knee and the foot servo, we did not take the x-axis into account. As you can see on the left drawing, the hip rotation means that the foot needs to move longer to reach point P, since line H is longer than the line L we used for calculations of the foot and the knee servo. This is fortunately easy to fix. You simply use the length of H instead of Y when calculating the angles for the knee and the foot. Before we dive into the code, I unfortunately must complicate things a bit further so we can handle all the legs. This is mainly a matter of applying some constants to the other values we have already calculated, so this is not too hard. We provide the position of the foot based on the center of the robot C. But since our calculations for foot, knee and hip servo are done based on the leg itself, we need to know how the leg is anchored versus the center of the robot. This is a constant you can measure manually on your robot frame. Besides being mounted at different positions, none of the legs are pointing towards the x-axis but are already rotated at an angle to the body. 
This angle is a constant for each leg, and we need this initial angle to get our calculations of the hip rotation right. Since our leg anchor is the position of the hip servo joint, but some of the calculations are based on the knee servo joint, we need to know the offset position of the knee servo joint relatively to the hip servo joint. This is the same offset for all the legs and can be measured manually on your frame. But since the knee position will also change when the leg is rotated, we also must take that into account. I will show you how to do that in the code. The final thing we need to consider before coding is the way the servos are mounted on the left and the right side. For example, to make the foot move a certain number of degrees, the PVM signal we provide to the servo must make it turn clockwise on one side of the robot and counterclockwise on the other side. We handle this through some settings for each servo so it doesn't affect the math. Since you followed along so far, be super proud of yourself. This was likely not so easy to follow. But now you know all the math required to implement inverse kinematics for a robot on your own. If there was a part you did not understand, try to follow the explanation of the code and it will make more sense. You can find the completed code in this GitHub repository. To simplify the code, I've chosen to create a class to encapsulate a servo. I have also made a class for a leg that contains an object for each servo. When the leg is told where to place the foot, it will calculate the correct angle for each servo. The hexapod itself is controlled by the main program that will tell each leg where to place the feet during a walking cycle. The servo class holds constants that describes the physical parameters for pulse width or PVM, angles and speed, and whether the servo rotation should be reversed. The servo is initialized with an ID, the servo controller channel, and whether it's reversed. When the set angle method is called, it will use the constants to calculate the desired PVM signal to send to the servo controller. The leg class hold variables that are set on initialization for anchor position and rotation versus the body. It also holds some constants for the physical length of the thigh link and the foot link we need for our calculations. But the real magic, it happens in the method called set foot position that is called with the desired position of the foot and it will then calculate the servo angles. As you may remember, the foot position coordinates are given relatively to the center of the robot. So first, we calculate the foot position relatively to the anchor, which is the center of the hip servo. Then, we can easily calculate how much to turn the leg, the hip rotation. Since the leg is already rotated versus the x-axis, we must subtract this initial angle to figure out how much to rotate the hip servo to reach a desired position. The next step is to figure out where the knee servo is located after rotation of the hip. Now we can calculate the desired foot position versus the knee servo. Finally, we calculate the angle of the knee and the foot servo as I have shown in the math section. And we remember to fix the gap on the foot servo by subtracting the constant we measured. When all calculations are done, we apply the angles to the servos. The main hexapod program needs to initialize each leg by providing the anchor positions. Then we can call set foot position method with a foot coordinate and the leg will calculate the correct servo rotations. So now we have all the basic code needed for the hexapod to place each leg where we want it. To simplify animating the robot, I have created some keyframes that hold position for each leg. To make the robot walk, the hexapod program will fetch the desired foot position from a given keyframe and apply to each leg. It will then wait for the servos to stop moving and provide the next keyframe. These keyframes together make up a walking cycle, a rotation or anything you want. To control the robot, you also need to read Bluetooth commands and several other things, but you can see how to do that in my other videos or study the code. Thank you so much for sticking with me until the end. It got a bit longer than I hoped for, but I really wanted to make a complete guide, so I hope it was worth your time. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video for a new robot build.